In this video, we have to prove that if x is a real number, then there exists a positive integer n such that x is between negative n and n. So let's go ahead and try to work it out, so proof. So before we write the proof, we have to figure out the proof. So um, let's go ahead and try to do that. So this will be our scratch work. So to do this proof, we have to use something called the Archimedean property or Archimedean principle. It basically says that given any number, you can find the number that's bigger. So let's start by using x. If we have x, then we can find the number that's bigger than x. So we can find the natural number n that's bigger than x by the Archimedean principle. So if you write this backwards, this means that x is less than n. So that takes care of the first condition. Now we somehow need to involve a uh, negative n. In particular, maybe we can start by trying to involve a negative sign. So one way to do that is to look at negative x. So if we look at negative x, again by the Archimedean principle, this says that there is an integer, maybe let's call it m, that's bigger than negative x. Right? We can't use the same n, right? The Archimedean principle uh, just guarantees the existence of a number. Uh, it doesn't spe specify what the number is. So using the Archimedean principle once, we have n bigger than x. And rewriting it, we got this. Using it again on negative x, we get m bigger than negative x. Now, when you multiply by negative 1, what you get is negative m and then you switch the inequality, less than x. So now we have this. So putting both of these conditions together, we have x less than n bigger than negative m. If you're curious as to why I used negative x, it was pure luck. Um, I was thinking that because there's a negative here, well, maybe not luck, <laughs> but because there's a negative here, I figured we somehow have to involve it. So let's try to use negative x. We're almost done, right? We're almost done with our scratch work. These numbers need to be the same. So let's look at a picture here. Let's say this is x, and this is n, and this is negative m. This is one possible scenario, right? So we want x to be between these numbers. So what we could do is we could take the maximum distance, right, between these. So we would take this bigger distance here. So if we were, that's m in this case, right? This distance here is m. So if we put m over here, that would work. X would be between negative m and m. So we just have to take the biggest distance. So we're going to set, let's call it big N, to be equal to the maximum of n and m. And that's what we're going to use in the proof. Okay. If we use this, we should get everything to work. Let's try it. Let's go back to the proof now. So it says if x is a real number, so we'll start by assuming that. So suppose x is a real number. And now it'll all come uh, to clarity, hopefully, uh, after we do this. And we have to show the existence of a positive integer such that this is true. Right? We decided that if we take the bigger of these two, uh, it will work. So first, we have to go through this whole procedure again. So since x is a real number, so x is in the set of real numbers, by the Archimedean principle, there exists a natural number, which I'm going to give. Uh, I'm going to give it a different name. Okay, I'm going to call it n1. I want to save n for my final answer. So n sub one in the set of natural numbers such that n is bigger than x. Now let's do it again with negative x. So since, since negative x is a real number by the Archimedean principle, so AP, there exists a natural number, possibly another one, which I'll call n sub 2 in the set of natural numbers such that, and this time we have that n sub 2 is bigger than negative x. So that would mean that negative n sub 2 is less than x. 
and then taking this condition and reading it backwards, x is less than n sub 1. Okay, and let me just explain this step again. So, so here's, here's n2, here's negative n2, here's x, here's n1. So if we take the biggest distance between the two and we call that our n, x will be between those numbers. And we'll also show it mathematically, as you'll see in a moment. So take n to be equal to the maximum of n2, n1. Then, okay, let's carefully show it. So then let's do the easy case first. So then x is less than n1, we know that already, which is less than or equal to n because n is the maximum of the two, right? It's the maximum of the two. So now we have to show that x is bigger than negative n2, right? We have to show that x is bigger than negative n2. So let me come back over here. So if we want to show that x is bigger than negative n2, right, uh, it might be worth showing, um, well, I guess we have to involve n2 with n somehow, right? So let's think here. So note, let's just see what happens. Let's try it. n2 is um, less than or equal to n, right? So now we need to involve uh, negative numbers. So this would mean that negative n2 is greater than or equal to negative n, right? So rewriting this, this would mean that negative n is less than or equal to negative n2, which is less than, look up here, less than x, which is less than, well, it worked out perfectly, n1, which is less than or equal to n. So in particular, this means that negative n is less than x, which is less than n. And that completes the proof. Got a little bit freaky there at the end. When I got here, I wasn't, uh, after this, I wanted to involve a negative. And I, I tried to involve x, but then I realized, wait a minute, n is the maximum of n2 and 1. So let's, let's just focus on that. n2 is less than or equal to n. And then you want to involve negative n2. So you multiply by negative n2. And then just write this down and read it backwards, right? So negative n is less than or equal to negative n2, which is less than x, which is less than n1, which is less than or equal to n. And so you get this condition here. So kind of figured it out uh, on the spot. Uh, but hopefully that helps because uh, when you're doing these on your own, um, that's what you have to do, right? You have to figure them out. So uh, maybe if you see how I figure it out, maybe that will help you learn how to uh, figure it out uh, for yourself. So I hope this video uh, has been helpful. That's it.